How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another Dynamic Projectiles video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make an actual music control music event. If you recall in the last uh, video here, we made our music event, but we didn't do anything with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our game event and we're going to hit N on the keyboard to bring up our event sheets. And I'm going to click OK on our music events and drag it into our game event. So now it's going to be included. Now, a music management system is actually easier than you think. We just need to have the on-off switch work the way it's intended to work. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to double click on our game layout and make a new sprite. So the, oh, hold on, the game layer, layer is locked. So let me exit out real fast and let me unlock it. Let me go back to our sprite, double click, and let's resize it to be 16 by 16. Let me zoom in here and let me click, let me take a black color and let me draw with the pencil tool a simple, oh my goodness, that was the worst drawing I've ever done. Let me just try to draw musical notes to the best of my wonderful pixel art abilities. And that, that doesn't look good. Let's try this again. I think I can do this. Uh... Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, this is going to be our music note, which is going to represent, oh, you can mute the music or all the sounds. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click on this frame and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I have the same frame. I'm going to click a red color. I'm going to take our line tool. And this way I can drag from the corners to actually create an X. So when people land on this frame, they're going to see that, oh, the music's not playing anymore and when they go to the first frame or frame zero, they're gonna be like, oh, the music's playing. So this is kind of backwards. This is a backwards trigger because when you see this, you want to click on it and turn it to this. And that's what generally confuses people when they have to set up these on off switches. So what we have to do because we have this camera object following our player, we have to actually make this on its own layer as if we were making a HUD element for our game. That's exactly what this is. So I'm going to control X to cut it off of this layer. I'm going to lock this layer and we're make a new one. Now I'm going to right click and rename this to be our HUD or our whatever we want to call this, our music layer. It doesn't really matter, but this is where we would put, you know, a health bar or something like that, a score. But the big reason why we have to put it on its own layer is because we need, we need it to parallax at its own rate. And in this case, we need it to be static. So to do this, we're going to put the parallax X and Y to zero by zero. And now I'm going to hit control V and I'm going to click to paste it on here. Now, if you'll see that we have our window size, our dotted line, it's a little hard to see on this recording here, but it's right there, right where our collision is. I'm going to put this hugged right next to the window. So when I hit play and I bring this over, you can see now that it's going to be right in the top right there. So what I'm going to do next is I need a way to actually trigger this. I need a way to turn it on and off. So let me call this object music. And let's actually give it an instance variable. Let's add a new one and let's make it a Boolean. So it has to be a true or false statement and let's call it muted. Okay, cool. So now that we have everything set up, let's go to our music event and let's create some events. The first one being a start event. So let's go system, start of layout. And this is just going to be called. So when we include this, and we can double click to go to this event sheet, when we include this, it's going to add this to our start of layout code. What we want to have happen is we want our audio to play. Now I've already added some theme music for this game, which is just general theme music that I would like to loop. So I'm gonna turn the loop from not looping to loop. And it's a little bit loud, so I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna turn it less than half. So I'm gonna put it to negative 20, decibels where half is negative 10. I'm going to put it so, so it's really quiet so you can hear. Now optionally I could give it a tag and that tag would let me actually control the individual audio sound. So if I just wanted the music to be paused or not paused, if I just wanted the music to be muted and I didn't want the sound effects, I would give it a tag of, you know, background music and I would give every other background element or background music element, that same tag. So when we mute the background music, we have it separated from the sound effects. But for this example, we're gonna mute everything. So we're gonna hit okay there. 
Then what we need to do is we need to go to our mouse object and we need to say on the object clicked. And in this case, on the object clicked, object music. So if you click on object music, then what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is we're going to actually have to have some sub events. And before actually, no, no we, we can have a sub event here. Let me click again, or let me just copy this blank sub event and paste again. And now we have these two blank sub events that are going to be triggered when we click on this object music. And what we need them to check is if our instance variable is true or false. So let's double click on the first one. Let's go to our object music and let's go under instance variables is our Boolean instance variable set. So we only have one. So is our muted true? This is what this statement is saying. Now, if I control click and bring it down, what I wanna do here is I don't wanna have a duplicate, I wanna have an invert. So I'm gonna right click and invert. Is our muted, not, our muted Boolean not true? So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually have to flip them. So if it is muted, we need to set muted to false. If it is not muted, we need to set it to true. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna go add an action. We're gonna to go to our object music and we're gonna go into the instance variables section, set the Boolean of muted to false. Now I'm gonna control click this and bring it down to copy it. I'm gonna double click and now I'm gonna set it to true. So what we have, if it is muted, then we're gonna set it to false because we're clicking on it again and we don't need it to be muted anymore. If it's not muted and we're clicking on it, then we do need it to be muted, so we're gonna set it to true. So it's just kind of like a diagonal where this goes here, then this goes here, then this goes here, then this goes back to here. So that's a little bit confusing and that's something that you wanna keep in mind because it's this on-off switch logic that you need to always be you know, ready for in case you need something like this in Construct 2. The one thing I forgot to add to our start of layout is we want our animation frames not to just continuously play. So we're going to go to our object music and we're just going to hit we're just going to hit stop. So now on the start of the layout, it's going to play the theme music, it's going to loop it, and then it's going to stop this from playing more than one frame. So it's just going to stay on the playing music frame because that's frame zero. Okay. So now if it is muted, what we need to do is we need to actually set this frame to be zero because when we set it to one, we always need to set it back. So we're gonna add the action for our music object to set the frame to zero. Then I'm gonna control click this and bring it down. And if it's not, then I'm going to put it to one, which was our muted with the red X frame. So let's see what happens when I hit play. So if I hit run layout, now we have our game. And if I click this, nothing, nothing happens. And in fact, you could probably not even hear me. The only thing that's happening is we're actually changing our animation frame, but it's not going back. And more importantly, it's not setting the music to be quiet. So what we need to do is we need to go to our is muted. We need to add the action from our audio to set silent. Now we have a lot of options here, all of which are great options, but the one that we want to mute everything is gonna be set silent. So we're gonna hit okay. So if it's muted, set silent. If it's not muted, we're gonna set to not silent. I believe I have this correct, maybe I don't. Let's check. You know what, they're backwards. They are backwards. If it's muted, set not silent. If it's not muted, set silent, there we go. And there it goes. But you'll see here that we can't set it back. So when I click on this, it's not going back. And that's a very frustrating and common bug for a lot of people who are just starting out programming, and especially with Construct 2. And here's the reason why. Construct 2 cannot catch up in time to check if this Boolean is true or false. And it really just needed a split second to let it catch up to that. So to create that split second for it, we're gonna add a wait. So we're gonna go system, we're gonna type in a wait, and then we're gonna pick the wait event and we're going to put it in for 0 0.01 seconds and we're going to put this all the way to the top so that plays first i'm going to control click and bring it down so now by waiting this fraction of a second we're giving it enough time to recognize what this boolean is equal to so if i hit play and i click on it and now everything is silent i can shoot i can jump and we can't hear anything but if i click again it's gonna reset because it gave itself 
that extra time. Now here's something cool that we can do. So if I'm just kind of shooting along or if I have my machine gun, I'm just kind of shooting along and I hit unmute, you can hear where it's picking off. So if I, you can hear that it's going to continue right where it left off. So this is a very solid way of having a simple music effect or music management system, music control, whatever you want to call it. I really do hope that you learned a lot from this and can go even further with this. And maybe you want to give sound effects specific tags, or maybe you want to give this menu theme a specific tag as their background music or something like that. And you can really just start to make your entire options menu for music controls and uh, so many other things that you can do with this. But I hope this at least gets you started. If you have any comments for any future videos I should do, please let me know below and I'll be sure to answer you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander and I'll see you next time.